What's up, vapers? Thanks for checking out Daily Vape TV. My name is Nick, and it's that vlog time once again. That's right. This is episode 43 of my Let's Vape vlog series, where I talk about a whole bunch of different topics affecting the industry and my channel and just everything else in between. I've got a fairly full show on tap for you guys today, but we will be switching up the running order ever so slightly. So we're going to start with the news and updates segment, as we typically do, because there's so much advocacy news to talk about this week. Next, after that, we're going to go straight into some vape mail. I've got a bunch of vape mail in this week that I want to unbox and share with you guys. Then we're going to talk about what I've been vaping on this past week. After that, we've got some shout outs to do, and then we're going to go straight into the first impressions. Now, the first impression segment is all going to be stuff that I unbox, so it's literally going to be my very first impressions on these devices. And then finally, we've got a random review to cap it all off. So stay tuned, guys. Get a frosty beverage if you want one. Grab your favorite mod, sit back, relax, and let's vape. So I'm just going to go ahead and tackle the toughest topic first, which is the San Francisco flavor ban. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have already heard the news that San Francisco has kicked off the prohibition on flavored vapor products with their ban on flavors. The only thing you'll be able to buy in San Francisco now is tobacco flavor. They even included menthol flavors in this ban. So with that, I'm just going to read this article in front of me here real quick. It says, San Francisco has voted overwhelmingly for an outright ban on all flavored e-liquids, a move which could be mimicked across the country. Residents had turned out to vote yesterday, Tuesday, after the city's Board of Supervisors last year approved a total ban on flavored tobacco products, including e-liquids. It had been taken to the public ballot after tobacco company R.J. Reynolds organized a petition known as Proposition E, so residents could have their say before it was actioned. In yesterday's vote, 68% voted in favor of, and 31% opposed the ban, which includes everything from candy-flavored e-cigarettes to conventional menthol cigarettes. Other cities and states could now follow suit with San Francisco's neighbor San Mateo County also voting for a ban yesterday and Chicago filing a similar similar proposal now due to be scrutinized by its finance committee. Opponents to San Francisco's new law were mostly consumers and small business owners who were worried the law could kill off local trade in the city. They argued not only would it mean shop closures vape users would have to travel outside the city to buy their e-liquids taking more business away from the city. Supporters of the ban including the campaign for tobacco-free kids said they believe the ban on all flavored e-liquids, including candy and bubblegum flavors, which they believe lures children into vaping, would see fewer underage vapors take up the habit. However, opposers of the ban said residents are now much more likely to buy products over the internet instead, where it's actually easier for teens to buy them. Vape users, as well as harm reduction advocates, also argued that banning flavors would make it harder for adult smokers to quit. While some believed it was only the big tobacco giants who stood to lose out with a flavor ban, Greg Connolly, president of the American Vaping Association, didn't see it that way. Quote, it is a travesty that anti-vaping extremists would mislead San Francisco voters into making it harder for adult smokers to quit. End quote. He said, adding that flavored products are helpful to smokers who want to give up. So I really feel bad for the San Francisco vapors that will now have to either shop online or go outside city limits just to get their favorite flavors, but also the local business owners, the shop owners out there that are either going to have to move outside of the city or just close up shop altogether because with the, only one flavor on the shelf, it's not going to happen. I really feel like there's no shop that could stand up on its own two feet with just selling tobacco flavors. So you know what really gets me about these flavor bands is at the end of the day, everyone talks about the children. It's all about the children. Think of the children. Worry about the children. Children, children, children. And it's not going to stop them. They're going to be able to get their hands on flavored vapor products one way or another. It doesn't matter what you do, how many bands you put into play they're still going to get it. And with that, it's going to also hinder adult smokers from the ability to try flavored vapor products to help them quit smoking traditional cigarettes. So this isn't going to help. Unfortunately, San Francisco is so narrow minded and they're using these spun numbers and spun information to kind of attack us as a vapor industry. So 10 bucks says the advocates for the vaping industry have already started strategizing a plan to get this ban removed. And with that, this is definitely not the end for San Francisco. I still have a lot of faith that we can get this turned around and we can get this law changed. But with that, only time will tell. And I just want to hear your guys' thoughts about this whole situation down there in the comments box. Speaking of flavor bans, the New York State flavor ban is going to the Senate. Now, I do have an article here to read you guys real quick. It says, among the legislative bills awaiting action in the final stretch of the state legislative session is one that affects the vaping industry. State lawmakers are considering a ban on flavored vaping products. The bill A8688 would prohibit the 
sale of flavored e-liquids and flavored e-cigarettes. According to the memorandum in support, this bill would eliminate the temptation for young people in New York State to try flavored electronic cigarettes and in turn reduce the number of people who become regular users of tobacco products. Brian Ellis is vice president of operations for Yeti Vape with six stores regionally. Ultimately, the state wants to eliminate the sale of any flavor other than menthol or tobacco. His company currently sells about 160 flavors. This legislation would kill about 92% of our business. Only about 8% of sales are tobacco or menthol, he says. I'm sure they're trying to make this less appealing to kids, Ellis said. We've already taken steps to combat underage kids from getting our product with increased age verification protocol. We have a scanner that takes the barcode off the back of an ID. We also have electronic ver age verification on our website to make sure the can customer is of legal age. The vaping retailer offered this perspective. It would be almost like walking onto a car lot and the only two models you see are a two-door sedan and a four-door sedan. No more sports cars, no more SUVs, no more utility trucks, said Ellis. He has found that people often start with a tobacco or menthol flavor, but ultimately they move on to a flavor such as strawberry or custard. Using a flavor other than tobacco or menthol allows them to disassociate themselves with the act of smoking and increases their chance uh, chances of success. Ellis, who is pleading with the state to leave us be, said the legislation is out of committee and going to the full legislature for consideration. The session is set to end June 20th. So, with that, we have another one. We've talked about this one before, but I want to use this to, as an opportunity to kind of start a conversation about flavors in general and how they affect you, where you started, where you ended up, and, you know, me personally, I started with a pure menthol, and I was only on that for a couple of weeks. In fact, I actually had a pure menthol flavor as well as, like, a fruit punch flavor, and I wanted to try, you know, a little of column A and a little column B. I tend to, uh, to gravitate more towards the menthol flavor at first because it was what I was used to, but then I slowly started to kind of introduce the fruit punch into that equation, and eventually I was vaping nothing but fruits with a little bit of menthol, and after that I decided to drop the menthol altogether. So I want to hear from you guys, though. Did you start on a tobacco or menthol and moved over to something else, or did you go straight for the candies, fruits, drinks, that kind of thing, all the random flavor combinations that are available to us. I want to just hear from you guys, so just make sure you drop a comment right down there in the box below. But with that, New York State, it is not over yet. You can still contact your legislators. You can still write them emails. You can still f make phone calls, and you can still write them physical letters as well. So we still have a few days left. We have a little bit of time, and we can still make a difference. So hopefully we can get this whole thing turned around, and we can make a difference in the vapor industry. Speaking of making a difference, we can all make a difference on a national scale if we submit our comments to the FDA for their flavored vapor products comments period, which we have now been granted a 30-day extension. It says here on CASA's website, the FDA is extending the comment period for the advanced notice of proposed rulemaking regarding a product standard for flavored vapor and tobacco products to July 19th, 2018. CASA and many other groups submitted requests for a 90-day extension. While 30 days is obviously short of what we would like, it is an acceptable compromise for this phase of the rulemaking process. So this is a little ray of sunshine in an otherwise dark and gloomy vapor world right now. And with that, this is also going to give the anti-vaping people 30 more days to submit their comments as well. So we need to fight 10 times harder. Every one of you out there should be doing this at least once, if not multiple times. And you can also share this out with your friends. Share that link out. FDA100K.com. Grim Green made it really super easy for us to get to. So make sure you guys share that out as well. Everything will be right down there in the description below, so just click that link, do your part, and let's get this thing done. So with all the serious topics out of the way, let's go on to something a little bit more cheerful. I'm doing a massive 25,000 subscriber giveaway. To get in on that, all you have to do is watch my previous Let's Vape video, where I'll be linking that right down there in the description below. But with that, I'm giving away three medium flat rate boxes full of stuff. Each one will come with a full line of blaz and your choice of nicotine. We also have mods and atomizers and stickers and wick and wire and all that good stuff. Everything is going to be in those boxes. You're not going to know what you get until you open it, but it's going to be awesome. Three winners, three equal prizes. It's going to be great, you guys, so make sure you get in on that. So the other little channel update I had for you guys is the fact that my summer line of shirts is now available on Teespring. Make sure you guys go check them out. I think they came out awesome. Uh, you can get a discount if you are a patron of mine or you are a Cloud Crew member. So if you want a discount on these shirts, then all you have to do is go to Facebook, join the Daily Vape TV Cloud Crew group. The link is right down there in the description and the links will all be on that page. It's just that easy and you get a nice discount. If you want an even bigger discount, then join up with my Patreon at the $5 tier or higher.
higher and you get a special link for an even bigger discount. Plus with that, I'm starting giveaways this month. I've got a ton of stuff to give away and we have more tiers now and stuff like that. So make sure you guys go check out my Patreon account if you want to sign up. Just link is right down there in the description. All right, guys, it's vape mail time once again. I've got a bunch of stuff to look at here, so let's go ahead and get started. First one is this one here. This is Royal Mail, so it's from the UK. I have no idea what it is, but let's go ahead and take a look, shall we? Oh, yeah. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, all right, cool. It's the Vaptio Solo F2. Uh, I believe Mike's Mex uh, was using one of these, or was it Jay? I can't remember. They said it was pretty good, so I'm really looking forward to trying this thing out by the end of the show here, so that will be a first impression. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty neat. Vaptio Solo F2. Next thing is another Royal Mail. So we have something else from over there. And uh, yeah, let's see what we get. Oh, yes, I like these packages so much more. Uh, let's see. Oh, Daily Vape TV, that's me. Vape Storm Puma Box Mod. There we go. We got the Puma. And this is the one that kind of looks like the, uh, looks like the Y Mod or whatever it's called. Uh, I forget who makes that one now. All right, what is it? Oh, 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 we got a shirt. We got a shirt. Check it out, guys. We got a shirt. This is pretty cool. I'm digging it. Definitely digging it. I like it, what do you guys think? Next up, we've got a DHL bag. So this is something, I don't know what it is. Gonna have to find out. Gotta love the DHL bags though. Oh man, this thing is taped up really, really good. Let's just rip it, screw it. Let's see if we can get in here. There we go, see, use your teeth. All right. Let's see, I think this might be Heaven's Gifts, if I'm not mistaken. We've got the Joytech Riftcore Duo. I've really wanted to take a look at this one. And the OBS Engine. Engine 2, Engine 2. I believe this is Heaven's Gifts, don't quote me on that. And Heaven's Gifts, don't kill me if it wasn't you. Sorry about that, I don't know, I can't remember. Too many emails. Next up, this is kind of a heavy one. Uh, so yeah, let's just take a look. Let's see. Ah, uh, the easy open. Yeah, boom, FedEx, there we go. FedEx knows how to do it. Oh, look at that. Coil art, this is coil art, let's see. Oh man, holy crap. There's a lot of stuff in here, okay. Mage sub tank coils, okay. We got a mage sub tank. Oh, with mesh coils, yes. We got a little pamphlet thing. Discover your flavor, Mage RTA V2. Uh, let's see, Mage 217 box mod, that's pretty neat. It's kind of a, I wonder, is that a copper? Yeah, it's a copper color, that's neat. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, the black and gold as well. And last but not least, we have another Mage sub tank. So obviously we'll be doing a giveaway for these as well at some point. And another little sheet, info sheet, if you will. I like that. It's very helpful that they include that kind of stuff because normally I have to search all over the place for that sort of information. And last but not least, boom, another DHL bag. So this one's kind of rattly. It's a big old box. The classic yellow tape of goodness. All right, gonna need my scissors for this one. Oh. All right, chop and slice. Er, er, er. Get in there. All right, what do we have here? Ooh, oh man, wow. The Flux Kit by Watofo. These are cool looking. This is a Rig Mod Worldwide uh, collaboration with Watofo. These things look sick. I have two of them here. Oh, I got the red one too. Oh man, that looks awesome. I love the paint on there. Really looks sick. Oh my God. 
I've got, oh geez, I'm leaking coils here. I'm leaking coils. All right, so we've got some of these Easy Fill Squonk caps. I've really been looking forward to these. Joel's been teasing us on vape stew with them. And finally, I get my hands on some. Oh man. Uh, wow. Well, we got a whole bunch of Watofo coils. Uh, and one of the caps fell off. Oh, two of the caps fell off. So the coils are all inside the box here. That's a mess. But yeah, we got a bunch of pre-made coils here. Wow. It looks like they come with how many pieces? 10 pieces. You get 10 coils in this little tube section. So that's awesome. I really like these coils and they did a really good job with them too. So thank you Watofo for hooking it up big time. All right, guys, it's time to talk about the setups that I've been vaping on this past week, starting off with this one right here. This is the USV ARC 240 with the Coil Art Mage V2 on top of there. Inside the tank, we've got some of this Hometown Hero. This one is their legit line uh, Apple Cream Custard. It's a kind of a Fuji apple, which is really darn tasty, let me tell you. So let's go ahead and have a vape on this one. I'm loving the Mage V2 right now because not only is the flavor really super intense and awesome, but the airflow is very smooth and it's very quiet as well. I can't stand a noisy airflow. This one has a nice quiet draw to it. It's very smooth and it's very natural feeling. The next setup I've got for you guys is this right here. This is the Inakin Platform Series Chroma with the Zenith on top of there. Nice little flavor banger, mouth to lung, pre-made coil, super simple little device, really pocket friendly and portable definitely loving this one. This is my get up and go sort of mod because inside the tank we've got some of this Grindhouse e-liquid Americano, a coffee flavor, and this is definitely way outside of my normal wheelhouse. I pretty much only vape this one in the mornings on my way to work and when I'm drinking my coffee, but I've caught myself puffing on this thing from time to time during the day, so it's a nice little palate refresher sort of e-liquid, a nice cream coffee, boom, easy, easy sort of vape, and definitely loving this setup as well. Moving on, we've got the Half Moon Mods Squonker. This thing is absolutely gorgeous, even though it's the janky AF edition. That means it's their kind of mess ups. It's their little defect series or whatever you want to call it, but you can really barely even tell. Just a few little minor flaws in the faceplate here and one little divot in the bottom, but that's it. That is the only thing wrong with this thing. Otherwise, a flawless device. We have gorgeous, gorgeous transition here between metal and acrylic. There's absolutely no gaps. Your finger doesn't even get caught on that transition whatsoever. That is one thing that instantly made me love this device. Not only that, but it works really well as well. Hits super duper hard. I love the internals of this thing. Very clean looking and overall definitely enjoying it. On top of there, we've got the Redemption RDA by Armageddon and that has a matchy matchy little drip tip by Half Moon Mods as well. So for the juice, we have Ultimate Juice Sky Black. It's a black currant flavor. It's delicious. I have fallen deeply in love with black currant ever since I got back from the UK. And yeah, it's just my new jam. Next up, I've got something straight out of the Vape Vault. It's the Rig Pig by Vape Amp. And I wanted to bring this one out because they've been showing off their V2 Rig Pig and I want one of those so bad, but this one looks pretty darn close to that. And I just wanted to shine her up and, you know, get some more life out of this thing because it is a very well-functioning device. It's mechanical, it's series, it's raw power. It's nice and weighty and it fits well in the hand. Roughneck V2 on top of there with a DHD Goldie cap and just loving the setup, man. I don't know what it is about series power, but it's just something that you have to just kind of behold. I've got a very simple build on there. It's just a spaced 11 wrap, 24 gauge around a three millimeter bit, of course, dual coil. And I'm just really digging the flavor that I'm getting, uh, even though it's a simple build. I'm using some Vape Bay Bay's Leches. It's a Trace Leches cake. I love using a desserty sort of flavor on a series build because it just uh, brings out those rich tones of the flavor and the milkiness and the creaminess all together in one. It's just super, super delicious. 
And the last full setup I'm rocking is the Ravage 230 by Wismac with the UL fancier tank on top of there, which I built for Fresh Build Friday. Inside the tank, we've got some of this Vapor Freaks Banshee. This one is a summer fruits flavor. I cannot get enough of this stuff. Uh, this bottle's almost gone, and I'm going to be so sad when I finish the last drop of this stuff because it's absolutely delicious. Uh, with this setup here, it's tasting really good. The airflow, yeah, it's a little bit on the turbulent side, but overall, I'm still in enjoying it, um, vaping it at 69 watts, and I'm getting plenty of flavor and plenty of vapor as well. And the last thing I'm vaping on is the Miley. I love pod systems because they just kind of live in my pocket, and when I need a quick little rush of nicotine, I reach for it, and I puff away, and I am happy. So with that, I've been kind of going back and forth between these two, especially in the mornings, to give me that real quick initial rush of nicotine. Plus, you have a coffee flavor here. This one is the Mighty Mint flavor, so when you vape them together, it's like having an iced coffee. That is something really to behold, and I'm sure a lot of you guys out there that have tried those iced coffee flavors with menthol in it. Know exactly what I'm talking about there, but this gives me a nice quick little nick buzz and the satisfaction that I'm looking for. So pod systems like the Miley just live in my pockets 24-7. All right, guys, it's shout out time. Time for me to show some love for you guys that were kind enough to write in. And if you want to shout out for yourself, all you have to do is email me dailyvapetv at gmail.com. Have the subject say shout out request or something along those lines. And then just tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me your name. Tell me your vaping story. Tell me who you want me to shout out, whether it be you or someone else or anything like that. And that's it. That's all you got to do. I will get to your shout out at some point in time during one of these vlogs. But this week's uh, shout out section is, I guess, sponsored by Vaping. Vapes do Discord because <laughs> last night I told the guys to get their shout out requests in and then I said good night and well what do you know I woke up to a whole bunch of emails from the guys over on the Vapes do Discord if you guys want to get in on the Vapes do Discord all you got to do is check out the Vapes do crew group on Facebook and the link is in the pinned post there it's a lot of fun we hang out uh, during all hours of the day and night and we do voice chats we have a little music thing going and we have text chat of course as well we share ideas and stories and all sorts of stuff, and it's a lot of fun. So make sure you guys get involved in that if you enjoy the Vape Stew show. Speaking of voice chat, this one comes with a little bit of a backstory. Anytime anyone leaves the Vape Stew voice chat server on Discord, we all use the phrase, bye buddy, hope you find your dad from the movie Elf. And I don't know where it came from, I forget who said it first, but we all had a good laugh and now it's just a meme. It's a thing we all say anytime anyone leaves, and it's just funny. So all of these emails that I received have the body saying, hope you find your dad. And I guess that's something they all agreed on after I left. No clue there, but every single one of these emails says the exact same thing. So I'm just going to run through the names real quick. We have Demo Vapes. Obviously, check his channel out on YouTube. Alden Oreskovich. We have Mark Klo, Chris Snyder, Rob Jones, Denise Smith, Stan, aka Tenacious Texas Vapes. Also check him out on YouTube. Uh, Swaggins Vapor, Steve Romine, Frank Wolf, Keith Highgate, Bob Bob Shorky, Aziz, and Connie Fellows. You guys are awesome. Thank you guys so much for writing those emails. Definitely cheered me up this morning, and uh, it was def definitely something funny. But with that, if you guys want to get involved with the Discord server, then go check out the Vape Stew Crew group on Facebook. Request to join. Make sure you answer the questions, and the link is right there in the pinned post. It's a lot of fun. Again, we have a blast over there. I get to talk to you guys all the time, and it's just something that we get to do in between Vape do shows. So that's all the shout outs I've got for you guys this week. Make sure you get those requests in for next week's video and let's go ahead and move on. All right, guys, it's time for the first impressions on some of the vape mail that I received this week. And I decided I'm not going to do any of the rebuildable stuff because we'll get to those in a later video. Probably save it for something like Fresh Build Friday or something like that. But with that, first setup we've got is the Mage 217 box mod with the Mage sub ohm tank on top of here. This thing takes 21,700 batteries. So definitely digging that so far. I really like the shape of it as well. It's very comfortable in the hand to hold. And uh, it's got a nice big screen on the front as well. So sub ohm tank has mesh coils in it. It uh, comes out to 0.2 ohms, vapable between, I believe it's 70 to 90, 50 to 90 watts. So fairly high wattage for a nice little sub ohm tank. So let's go ahead and have our first vape on this one.
So the first thing I notice about this Mage sub-ohm tank is that it's significantly louder than its rebuildable counterpart, the Mage V2, and it's just something that's just kind of noticeable. It's not really that bad, I guess, but it's definitely a noticeable difference between the two devices, and it's still a very smooth sort of vape. It doesn't really feel turbulent at all, which is definitely a good thing for me, and overall the vape is very nice off of it. It's warm, dense vapor. Flavor is all there. I'm absolutely digging all these mesh coils lately. It's just something I'm super into but the coil itself inside the Mage sub -own tank does look a little bit janky compared to something like the Horizon Tech Falcon or the Fire Luke Mesh Tank. So with that, I was kind of surprised by how good the flavor is overall. Speaking of flavor, I've got this Mr. Salty Grapple Berry inside the tank, and it's a five milligram Nick Salt, so I'm surprised by this one, uh, to be honest with you guys. It's actually a pretty darn good flavor uh, that I'm getting off of this thing. As for the mod itself, these notches cut out on the sides here, I, I guess are for aesthetic purposes. I'm not sure if they serve any sort of purpose other than the looks, but they are on the annoying side. They're a little bit sharp and they're a little bit noticeable when you're gripping onto this thing. Uh, overall, I really like the shape of this device. It fits really good in my hands, but those notches are definitely a detracting factor from that. Uh, otherwise, the battery back door is a nice touch. It's a simple little magnetic battery back door and it just clips on like that. Uh, lately, I haven't been overly impressed with the mods that have the bottom latch style doors, so this is a nice refresh refreshing change from that. Next up, I've got the Solo F2 by Vaptio to take a look at, and I'm loving the look of this thing overall already. I really like this little dust cap right here because it's magnetic, it's very easy, and it just locks on just like that. Super duper simple, and it just adds that little tiny bit of protection to the uh, drip tip section. So if you have it in your pocket and you got some lint in there or something like that, it's not gonna get down inside of this thing, and it just adds that little tiny bit of protection as well. Uh, but otherwise, the aesthetics of this thing are gorgeous. I really like this uh, this carbon fiber look of the tube section. It's very, very simplistic. It reminds me a lot of the Aspire, what was it, the K2 or the K3 kit. They had this sort of carbon fiber look to it, and I really dig it. It is a little bit on the cheapy feeling side. Uh, it's kind of plasticky, and the buddy button is a little bit rattly. But overall, it's not that bad for something for a beginner vapor, someone that's just getting into it. They're going to absolutely dig this thing. Wow, I am honestly impressed with how much vapor I'm getting off of this thing right now, and I gotta say, for such a small little device, you get a huge cloud off of it, so very impressed with that. The airflow itself is on the turbulent side, and it's on the loud side as well, so eh, a couple points off there, but overall, so far so good with this thing, and I just want to vape on it again. You gotta admit, that's pretty darn impressive from something like this here, but speaking of impressive, the flavor is very impressive. I am loving it right now. I'm vaping some of this Adore e-liquid, not from Concentrate, and it's an orange flavor. You get all those really nice, bright, sweet notes of orange. No sort of bitterness or rininess or anything like that. It's very, very good, and I'm really digging this thing right now. And the last device we're going to take a look at today is this Watofo Flux Kit. This is their collaboration with Rig Mod. And first thing I noticed about this is how gorgeous it is. It's absolutely stunning. I love the color scheme. It's a blue sparkle with a little bit of purple in there. It's got a big screen on it, which is full color. And it's got this little LED bar there. You can see it going up right there. It's really darn cool. I absolutely love the aesthetics. I threw the bubble glass on. I threw some juice in the tank. And today I'm vaping on this Mystery Pop by Mighty Vapor papers, and let's go ahead and give this one a shot. As you can see, plenty of vapor production out of this one. The coil comes in at 0.19 ohms. I'm vaping at 65 watts on powerful mode, and it's a mesh coil as well, so flavor for days. Definitely digging the flavor out of this one. The airflow is a little bit on the loud side, but not very turbulent whatsoever. And overall, so far, really, really digging this one, especially because it's very comfortable to hold on to. Really nice and ergonomic design, and just the aesthetics of this thing are absolutely gorgeous. 
I guess the one thing I could say about this device is that it does feel a little bit on the cheaper side. Not the, you know, highest quality feeling mod I've ever held in my hands, but then again, it does not feel anywhere near as cheap as some of the other devices that I own. And with that, I'm still very happy with this one so far. Otherwise, I'd have to say that the bottom battery door thing, eh, it's a little bit of my sort of personal complaint, but I could definitely see where a lot of other people wouldn't care about that sort of thing. But overall, so far, the Flux Kit is definitely good in my book. All right guys, so before we go, we're gonna do a random quick review. And today we're gonna to be looking at Grindhouse E-Liquid Americano. This is described as a smooth, full body dark roast coffee with a splash of cream. I've been vaping on this one on and off for weeks now. And I gotta say, I am absolutely in love. I was never a huge fan of coffee flavors because I just couldn't find one I liked until now. This one is absolutely delicious. So let's go ahead and have a vape on it. So I love vaping this one on a mouth to lung setup because you get that really rich coffee flavor and it just kind of sticks to your tongue after you exhale and it's just really, really nice. And you have that really nice lasting flavor. And I swear this one wakes me up in the morning. It must be some sort of placebo effect or something like that, but even the taste of coffee can get you going. So obviously this one pairs up really nicely with a cup of coffee, but you can also pair it up after dinner or after dessert with something as sort of a palate cleanser and or just sort of a relaxing sort of vape. Really, really good stuff, not loaded full of sugar or sweetener. It's just kind of that mellow, sort of bitter aftertaste, and it's so good, you guys. You gotta try it. If you're any sort of fan of coffee or coffee flavors or anything like that, then I would highly suggest you guys try out Grindhouse E-Liquid Americano. Like I said, he's got a full line plan, so stay tuned for those flavors. And if you guys want to check this one out for yourself, I'll leave a link right down there in the description below. All right, guys, so that about does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this. Don't forget to click that notification bell right next to the subscribe button if you want to be alerted whenever I upload videos. Also, leave me some comments in the box below about any of the topics that we talked about in this video. Also, make sure you check out the advocacy and my social media links right down there in the box below. Make sure you guys get your FDA comments in while you still can. We got 30 more days to get those done, so make sure you guys submit your comments to the FDA. But thank you guys so much for tuning in, and as always, Vape on. All right, guys, you just saw me build dual micro coils. Now let's see what she vapes like. Tons of vapor.